Uh, good morning. Uh, it's spring here, which is always a fascinating season for me. Uh, millions of gallons of water rush down the hill through the streams and the streets, and it, uh, I find it hard to believe that there's a shortage of water anywhere, of course, when that's going on. But that's not the point of my video. Uh, I went out for a walk today, and, and things shifted. Ed. Uh, my mentor in this technology, Martin Sage, uh, once said that there are four different brains that you have to get the intelligences to. You have to get, and you'll feel them going into different parts of your body. I talked about having what felt like an awakening with my son's knee the other day. Uh, but today I was on my walk, and I, uh, I think, I think that the challenge this lifetime is to love everybody unconditionally. I know other people have said that, and I know it. Uh, must seem, at least it seems to me like what a dipshit I am, do you know? Uh, how can you be so dense? I know that that's true. But, uh, and I think, and it may even be like the Holy Grail, trying to capture that thing that is so mythical and uh, challenging that it's uh, damn near impossible. Uh, it looks like the design of the mind, our reptilian nature, the little voice that talks to you, is to keep that from happening. And it looks like it brings events into your life, people into your life. And <clears throat> then all it takes sometimes is the use of the most abused invention of man, language. Somebody says something, and what I've said to women in the past, if men are yelling at you, it's usually blah, 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 blah. Claire, blah, 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 blah. Annette. Blah blah blah. You know, they just they're they're not really saying anything, but there there will be a name attached, so it will seem like a personal event. But as they're going through their rants, your mind will go into agreement that there's something wrong, that uh, there's been a perceived wrong, and then if you follow that trail, you if you connect the dots, then you can make sure that your mind is right. And their mind is wrong, and that's that's the whole practice, I think, of the uh, of the mind. It's, it, it's intention is to make sure that you stay in a state of fear and know that something's wrong and somebody's wrong. And what I think the challenge is then is how to find a way that you can love everybody unconditionally. And I've talked about this before. You know, one of the challenges uh, for me is the Bush family. I don't understand what they do, what uh, resolved that. One of the things that resolved is that I don't have to put up with them. You know what I mean? I don't. They're not in the public eye anymore, and I don't have to sit down to dinner with them, even though I invited ex-president, <clears throat> the older dad, 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 Bush, to dinner. Uh, he politely declined. But <clears throat> it wasn't until uh, my son, Lama Gelson from Maui, said to me, oh, dad, you wouldn't want to be on his journey. That's how you can go to unconditional love. And it's a challenge. For me, in uh, the immaturity of my system, I have some discipline and I know what to do. Uh, for the people that I can't love unconditionally, I remove them from my life. I uh, either uh, verbally, consciously, unconsciously. Um, a few years ago, maybe 10 years or maybe 15 years ago, some people came to visit us at our house in Houston. And they came with their family, and my house immediately became extremely segregated between boys and girls. And so when we were done, uh, they were staying, they had dinner, and then they got really tedious. So I went to bed, and the next morning I got a raft of shit for going to bed. And I said, they were boring. Well, you made me stay with them. I said, no, that I didn't do, honey. <laughs> I would have preferred you came to bed with me, but you once insisted on talking to these boring people. But I said, I don't want those people in my house anymore. She said, well, they're good clients. Da, 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 all the... I said, okay, but they don't treat people with respect, and I don't want them around. It was about, um, well, two and a half years later, the husband, they had gotten divorced. The husband came back, and he looked around the house, and he said, you know, I love this house. I said, yeah, me too. He said, um... You know how long it's been since I've been here? <laughs> I said, gee, I haven't been keeping track. <laughs> he said, it's been over two years since I've been out here. Uh, I think I unconsciously 
uh, well, I, I consciously stated my intention. And uh, when he came back, it was much easier to love him, much easier to have fun with him. Uh, it was lunchtime, so he didn't stay for dinner. <laughs> but I, really, I, I truly believe that that's the challenge. How do we love everybody unconditionally? And if we have some discipline around it, which I have something that I've learned, the discipline to have the courage to say, look, get out of my life for a while. Uh, we're not fit to be around one another because we can't treat each other with respect. Consider it. It's one of those little tools that have worked in the past, uh, and it's working right now. <laughs> www.micpeakperformance.com. Have a fun day.